step five is save for college for your children. A lot of what you hear Dave say is that he's not a big fan of prepaid tuition. So that was something that I really looked into. And, you know, I talked to my financial advisor at the time Mm -hmm. and I was asking him about different things. And I had been hearing really good things about the Florida prepaid program from peers of mine. And I talked through with my advisor and he said, well, this potentially could be a solid investment, a good choice for you. The tuition rate locks that you get with it because the program is is not insolvent, it's financially sound. It's been around for a long time. There's been recent legislation that has buffered it somewhat and, and made it a more attractive option for families to save and invest. We are doing some Florida prepaid, but also because our daughter's so young and we're not sure what trajectory her college is going to be, we also are doing separate savings in a Roth IRA as a way to provide more flexibility around how we're going to cover her expenses. So if she gets a full academic scholarship, the money in the Roth IRA will be available as an additional retirement account for us. So it does provide flexibility and we can withdraw from it without a tax penalty to cover college expenses. So we've decided to go that path of how we're doing that. And we know that may not necessarily be the best path for everyone, but definitely I I believe in saving for college. And we've got a little bit of of a, I wouldn't say complicated, but it's a diverse plan that we've got for that. So I want to get your thoughts on that. I do believe in planning for college, right? And it's it's a matter of the best fit tool is, right? So I am also not a huge fan in general of prepaid plans for a variety of reasons. One, a number of the prepaid programs have gone bankrupt and folks have gotten refunded the money that they contributed, which is really disappointing for somebody who's counting on those dollars to be used for education. And a piece of that is a little bit control, right? You want to have a little more control over how those funds are managed. I'm a huge proponent of 529 college savings plans. I think they're a great benefit, especially in states where you have income tax and you get an income tax benefit, an in-state income tax benefit for making contributions to a 529. I know, sir, uh, (laughs) that that does not apply to you. (laughs) That's not a thing down here. We're not going to talk about flood insurance. No, we're not going to talk about that, but no state tax. (laughs) No. And they'll get you. They'll get you somewhere, somewhere else. They're always going to get you. (laughs) But in the great social state of Maryland, we do have income tax (laughs) and uh, it's a nice benefit to be able to contribute to the uh, Maryland and state 529 plan. The Roth is an interesting option. We've taught you and I have talked about this. It mm-hmm. it depends a lot on how you fund the Roth, the timing of the distributions. Yeah. That is all very important when figuring out whether or not that's going to be a good solution for you. Mm-hmm. The other thing um, that your viewers may not love that I'm going to say is that I think that the approach to college savings in my career has shifted somewhat. So when I first started in the business, everyone was like, saving gung-ho, four years college education up front. We're going to save it all, save it in a 529, wherever our kids want to go. That's part of the American dream, right? I feel like the American dream is buying a house and going to college. Like Those are the two things that you're kind of programmed when you're born in this country that you should Mm do. Mm -hmm. And the longer I'm in this business, the more I feel like not everybody should buy a house Mm -hmm. and not every kid should go to college and not every kid should go to whatever college they want to because the rising cost of college, us in the financial community think that that may be in the next bubble to burst is college education because the rate of inflation on the cost of college education has been pretty consistently two, if not three times the rate of other inflation, and it's just not sustainable. And so I'm advising clients that Maybe you save a portion of it in a 529, you look at scholarships, you think about other funding opportunities, and you have a real discussion with your kid about what's doable for you and your family. I am really tired, and I'm just going to say this, I'm going to put it out there. Mm -hmm. I'm really tired of people sacrificing and leveraging their own retirement to send their kid to some wacky four-year private liberal arts arts college Mm -hmm. to explore themselves and decide that they want to double major in Russian literature and philosophy. 
Like right. those, in my opinion, like those, those years are over. There are no retirement loans, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It, you can't make that up in the end. And so I would encourage people to be a little bit more realistic about what you can afford to do for your kid's education, but planning is key and making sure that you're taking advantage of the tools and resources available to you to, to accomplish those goals. I will also say really quick plug, um, once again, just going to geek out on a little recent legislation and the Secure Act 2.0. Certain unused 529 balances can now be rolled into Roth IRAs for, for kids. So if you save too much in right. a 529 plan account, up to $35,000 can be rolled into a Roth IRA in the kid's name, which I think is an incredible benefit and a way to encourage people to save for their kids' education. Yeah. What, what an incredible start and in just... I can only imagine if I had 35 grand in a retirement account when I was 22 years old, just how, just how that sets you up for success. I, my financial yeah, planning, my financial planning heart flutters. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is a teacher's assistant at a school. And one of the, one of the interesting things that's been illustrated for her in working with these children is that there are a lot of delusional parents out there that are just in denial about their children. And if you're paying close enough attention and you're looking objectively at your children, you figure out pretty early on whether you got a college kid or not. Like by age three, you should you got a pretty good idea whether that child's going to be college material or not. You just know it, if you if you're really paying attention, you're not in denial about what your child's gifts are. There's not a single sector I could think of that doesn't have high paying fields that do not require four year degrees. Here, here. Right? You know, even the medical field, there are a lot of high paying positions you can get in the medical field. You know, medical coding and billing, right? They're trying to automate that and it's not going as well as they think it does, <laughs> they think it should. There's a huge demand for that. And they pay you can get paid a lot. Plumbers, oh my God. <laughs> oh. Ask me how much I've paid. I've paid my plumber more than I've paid my doctor this year. My husband has said, you know, our son is not going to college. He's going to plumbing school. Like he's going to be a plumber <laughs> or an electrician. Right. Yeah. Has boom, like boom, six figures. We live in an incredible country. We're very fortunate to be here. But I think one of the ways that we've let we've let each other down in the United States is that we don't have a really good system of technical schools. I feel like Europe got it right. There's like yep. this, there's like a college path and a technical path. And we've just, like I say, we, it's kind of been embedded into us from very early on that you, you, you go to college and buy a house. And those are the two things you have to do to, to be American. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know that that call, you know, that college is right for everyone. And I wish we had a better system of technical schools in this country and that we place more value on those technical skills than we do. I can't comment on how strong the network of technical schools are. I can comment on how they're marketed to students. Mm -hmm. Now, I was the nerd in high school that had the 29 on the ACT and getting full scholarships everywhere. Look at you. AP classes. I was that Look guy. Look at you. No one in my family ever encouraged me to even consider a technical path. And not that that was the right path for me. College was the right path for me. But a lot of the college courses I took in high school, college prep courses, I was sitting alongside people that had no business being in those courses because they're not they're not college material, but they really they're really good with their hands. They're really good at, at solving mechanical puzzles and they like working outside. Like, why are you not working at construction? Why are you not a welder? Why are you not? doing something that you enjoy because you're trying to live up to this expectation. And why is it that we advertise for colleges on during Saturday football and on all of these primetime spots, but the Tulsa welding school advertisements are always in the middle of the day when like judge Mathis and the price is right or wrong. Like, why are you only advertising to people who don't have jobs? Why are we not championing these very critical skills that we have? And a little bit more of a rant. So I work, in the collision repair industry. And one of the challenges that industry is facing is a talent crisis because it's they're having such a difficult time attracting young people to come into the collision repair industry. Although it is an extremely lucrative field that is growing, isn't it? Like the people think, oh, you know, there's, there's self-driving vehicles. 
you know, collision repair is going to die. No, there's been zero <laughs> reduction in collisions due to the advent increase because people get over reliant on the technology and they end up crashing their Tesla anyway. <laughs> So you now we it. have to build curriculum to teach them how to fix a Tesla so that they don't electrocute themselves from the high voltage that's in the Tesla. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. <laughs> Just that. Anyway, rant <laughs> over. <laughs> when I sit down with clients and talk about financial planning and I look at uh, I look at parents of ch small children and say, what do you want to provide for your kids for education? And they look at me like I have three heads because they don't realize that it's a decision to save for college. It's a decision to save for four years of public. It's a decision to save for four years of private. It's a decision to save for wherever they want to go or in state. All of these things are decisions that you have to plan toward. I've already told Alexis, you can attend any public school in the state of Florida. We've told you, our kids, we're, options. <laughs> we've told our kids, we're going to pick our favorite child and they get to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, what you just shush, said. Shush. <laughs> well, ben, you, sorry, ben, we're recording. You, ben, you know too much. <laughs> I'm like, well, you just <laughs> said your favorite child was going to be a plumber. So <laughs> all right. <laughs> baby step six. <laughs> Let's get off that subject before people get divorced. All right. Baby step six, because we already know if you get divorced, you're getting everything because you're a financial planner. <laughs> all right. So 